Yeah, so welcome. Uh, my name is Johnny Stormont Starling. I am one of the directors of UKUAT. UKUAT is a cross network, uh, cross industry network of growers, researchers, suppliers, architects, educators, and enthusiastic individuals. And we're all devoted to uh, advancing urban agritech as part of the solution for the various impending food and environmental crises. Uh, if you are based in the UK and in the industry, please consider joining and you can find details on the website. Now, uh, today we are very lucky to have uh, Katia Zakharaki, uh, who is a senior researcher, uh, senior research engineer for digital farming, uh, who works on leafy salads, microgreens and strawberries, which is why you're all here. She's working on also working on her PhD with Harper Adams University, and she is uh, a fellow uh, director of UK UAT. Um, if you wish to ask a question, please uh, follow the link which I'm about to put in the chat. Um, I, although you may have already found it from the from the title slide, and uh, we're using Slido for this because you can uh, uh, vote for your favorite questions. Um, so we can prioritize them towards the end. Uh, we have several questions in advance, which I believe Katia has uh, included uh, in her presentation. So uh, uh, without any more from me, uh, Katia, please, please go ahead. So welcome everyone. Thank you very much, Johnny, for the introduction. And I would like to thank everyone for joining us today. The interest for this webinar actually was quite remarkable. And we reached the maximum number within a few days, uh, which shows actually that the question of uh, what is the secret of growing strawberries in TCA in drinks, uh, lots of industry of, uh, you know, vertical farming and commercial strawberry production. I just wanted to give a small uh, disclaimer. Uh, I'm not intending in this webinar to share any secret of how we are going to have, you know, the ideal recipe of growing strawberries. But what I'm really aiming to do here is to encourage discussion within the industry, because that is an area that we can actually achieve and we can have viable, profitable crop. Um, I hope that makes sense. But if you have any questions and you would like to talk to me later, uh, you can please, you know, um, contact me in email, social media or anything you would like. So Johnny indeed said who am I and uh, what I'm doing. I just wanted to share with you where everything started and um, everything actually started in a glass house in uh, Agricultural University of uh, Athens where me and some other uh, colleagues of mine undergraduate, we started the web, uh, sorry, we started the um, trial with uh, different substrates and uh, strawberry, different strawberry cultivars in uh, hydroponics. So everything started in this uh, glass house. And today you find me with digital farming as um, a researcher. The main uh, interest of digital farming, which is a private company is microgreens, strawberries. And also we have an interest with um, the control of grow rooms and uh, total control environment, agriculture and software engineering. I'm doing as well my PhD at Harper Adams University and I have uh, two very fine supervisors, uh, Dr. Laura Vickers and Professor Jim Monahan. And as Johnny said, I'm also a member of uh, the directors of UK U18. If you have any questions, as Johnny said, please feel free to um, type them in Slido. Uh, the event code is uh, on the slide and uh, you can use your phone to scan the QR code. So I will start now. Strawberries. So how we, we grow strawberries? Mainly we grow strawberries outdoors uh, in probably on the soil, but uh, also we can grow strawberries in polytunnels apparently. Uh, the main way growing strawberries in polytunnels uh, recently is uh, a tabletop method. And tabletop method uses actually coya and provides irrigation with drip irrigation as well fertilization within the drip irrigation. And these are the two more most common ways of cultivating strawberries. Of course, we have um, glasshouse production. And uh, on this slide, I have two very nice examples of glasshouse in UK. 
we have the NGS systems, which are uh, Spanish, but the tip three based in Essex are using this uh, innovative method of uh, basically the rows going up and down, utilizing better the space within the glass house. We have also the Beeswax Dyson Farm, which is a new um, glass house. That's based near Boston. It's, um, it's uh, in UK, Lincolnshire. And it is six hectare glass house uh, combined together with an anaerobic digester. But of course, these are not the only ways we can grow strawberries in glass house. There are also other ways, not only in UK, you know, Europe and uh, globally. Now, Globally wise, uh, how much is the production of strawberries and how important is that crop? Comparing to 1961, where we had less than 1 million tons per year, today, with the, restart, uh, the most recent data from FAO, we have just reached around uh, 9 uh, million tons strawberries globally. We see that Europe always was uh, one of the leaders in strawberry production, but the last decades, Asia produces almost uh, one third of uh, global production. We have also America that contributes to a very uh, decent amount of uh, strawberry production worldwide. And Africa, the last 20 years is also producing some strawberries. In this graph, I don't think we can see very well Oceania, but they do produce some strawberries, but the amount is quite small. Now, if we consider um, the harvested area and the global production of uh, strawberries, we see that the last 10 years, from 2009 to 2019, the global production of strawberries increased uh, about 36%. But not the same happened with the area har harvested. Now, area harvested can also be the production area. That increased only for 23%. And uh, what we can speculate based on that is that we are now more efficient in producing strawberries, even if the available agricultural land is quite restricted. There are although other ways we can grow strawberries, not only outdoors in polytunnels and glass house, and one of those methods is PCA as well. So having now a look quickly on the 20 uh, top countries uh, of uh, production of strawberries, we see that China is producing uh, 3.2 million tons, and United States of America producing one third of that production. Then, the next positions are, you know, um, some countries that they, we know very well produce strawberries like Turkey, Egypt, Spain. And United Kingdom actually produces um, 141,000 tons, which is the 14th position in the top 20 countries globally. And let's have a look what happens in UK. So in 1988, we were producing in UK 46,000 tons. The total supply of strawberries on the same year was 63,000 tons. The UK production contributed for 72% of that total supply. The total supply, the uh, proportion of uh, total supply of UK strawberries uh, fluctuated through the years with the lowest um, proportion around 50%, 48%. In 2019, where the last, um, the more recent data are available from DEFRA, we see that UK home production increased to 1,041,000 tons, which is 75% of the total supply. And the total supply it is around 196,000 tons. Now, UK has actually developed very well and increased the production of strawberries, but uh, that uh, production of strawberries in UK that does not go around the whole year. So UK has actually to import strawberries. Some of the, some of the countries that UK is importing strawberries is uh, Egypt, Morocco, Spain, and Greece are the very first part of uh, the year. 
And we have also imports from uh, Peru and Mexico at the last part of the year. UK mainly produces strawberries between April and October, if we are lucky. And that depends uh, on uh, the cultivars that they are used, whether they are June bearers, ever bearers, and of course, whether they are using any protection, polytunnel glass house, or if they are heating their glass house. UK though production does not uh, is not sufficient to cover the needs of UK population uh, during those summer months. So we have still to import from probably Belgium and Poland. Of course, these countries are not the only one countries that UK is importing strawberries, but probably the main uh, countries that we see um, strawberries coming in. Now. What TCA can do? TCA probably could provide strawberries 12 months around the year. And uh, if we think very intelligently and we plan appropriately our farm, then we can actually do that quite um, successfully. Probably at the beginning, we won't be able to replace 100% the imports from other countries, but there is place for TCA within the supply chain. And before I start talking more about the strawberries and TCA, I just wanted to explain what this uh, acronym of TCA means. So many of you probably have heard um, CA, which stands for Control Environment Agriculture. And uh, that uh, is very close to what we are talking today but mainly refers to glass house um, production. So TCA has the additional word of total at the beginning. And that means we are controlling the environmental condition with an um, absolute manner. So we are not relying on light from uh, um, the sun, but we are providing the light we would like to give to the plants. Or at the other side, we are not uh, relying on uh, temperature that it is uh, outside of the glass house, but we are giving the exact temperature we are looking and we are aiming to. So total control environment agriculture is also vertical farming because uh, in most of the cases, we are going to stack our produce. And vertical farming also is indoor farming. So we talk about the same thing. And if we talk about indoor, then probably it's going to be in a new urban area. So we have urban farming. Some other people are also using the term of uh, plant factory. While we have also come across of the term, a combination of those terms actually, which is indoor, urban, vertical farming, all of them together. So when someone talks about vertical farming, is actually talking about TCA, or when someone is talking about indoor and urban farming, still is talking about TCA. And vertical farming actually has uh, seen lots of uh, success with investment, and a lot of people are looking into diversifying their activities into a vertical farming or TCA. We have a lot of interest globally, but also in UK. Most of those investments, though, they are into leafy salads and microgreens. And the question then we have is, can we, go, can we grow strawberries in TCA? Well, <laughs> definitely we can. And uh, we have some very good examples because people have grown actually strawberries in TCA with a very good business model and they're selling their produce in uh, customers at the moment. For example, we have Paris with Agricool, a very successful company that started growing uh, strawberries in container farms. The main uh, way they uh, have approached this cultivation was B2C, but also delicatessen shops. Another successful case of uh, TCA strawberry production is uh, a company in New York City, which is called Oise, and uh, they are growing very successfully the strawberry. But what they have done is uh, 
they are not competing with the prices of glass house or polytunnels. They have gone into an East market. They have approached uh, restaurants and they are selling their strawberries about $50 per pack. So we see that it, in, it, it can achieve, we can achieve a viable and commercial strawberry crop, but the business model is really, really important. We have, of course, other projects with strawberries and uh, TCA. Recently, we heard about Plenty and Driscoll, where they started collaborating on a TCA strawberry project. Other technology providers globally, example, just an example is iFarm. And we have also some of the UK UAT members that they have some small projects at the moment, like um, Vertigro and Innovation Agritech, but also IGS. Then um, if we start talking about LinkedIn, lots of people are posting uh, pictures of uh, their successful growing of uh, strawberries in TCA. We have, for example, Parus, very proudly are posting about their successes in growing. We have also another UK UAT member, CropTech. Again, on LinkedIn, they're sharing with us uh, the, the progress. And other individuals that they have an interest in uh, growing uh, strawberries in a total control environment agriculture. Lots of interest in Asia, which makes sense if we think uh, the proportion of the global production uh, of strawberries and, of course, the technology that uh, they have. So there are those challenges in TCA, and uh, that's why at the moment probably all of you, you are here today to listen what I think about that topic and uh, where the industry probably is going to go. There are some challenges, and uh, my personal opinion is that those challenges can uh, be categorized in two main uh, um, teams. One is uh, the team of plant science challenge, and the other is the group of uh, business challenges. So the number one challenge we have is light quality. So. I just have included a small slide about the light quality. This topic could be a whole webinar, probably a whole module in a course about the light quality of strawberry. But I just want briefly, very briefly to refer to that and just say how important it is and why that uh, it's a challenge in a TCA environment. So light quality, we have three main um, areas that we're interested in. One is the intensity of the light. The second is the spectrum of the light. And the third is the duration of day or the duration of night, photo period. So intensity is mainly linked with the plant biomass. Spectrum is mainly linked with the morphology of the plant and also the crop, the final crop. And photo period is mainly linked with flowering. But all of them, they direct at the same time with biomass, photo, um, morphology, and also flowering. They are very, very tight linked together. And in the environment of TCA, we need to have a great understanding of what is the optimum of each one of them. Now, um, peer review articles at the moment, they have not really established what are the exact requirements of different um, plants different types of strawberries. For example, what is the ideal intensity spectrum and photo period of a June bear variety? And uh, that can be easily understood because until two decades ago, we didn't have LED. And all this type of research about uh, total control environment agriculture did not exist. So researchers now, they are getting more interested into what the plants need, what is the optimum of the plants, and we see more funded projects around this exciting uh, topic of lighting. Although, since you see that some commercial companies, they have achieved the ideal light quality since they have achieved the commercial crop, 
That means those, answer, those questions probably have been answered by individual companies, but of course, because of IP, this information is not shared. So light quality, a very exciting topic. There are lots of things known within the outdoor production, but much more are also unknown, and we are very, very much interested, everyone in the industry, to know what's going on. Uh, part of that question is also into my PhD, which hopefully in a few years we are going to be able to read. Another challenge uh, related to the plant science of uh, strawberry, it's the environmental control. So what we see in vertical farming, uh, we probably tune you know, our system on a specific temperature humidity. There might be some fluctuation during um, day and night, but uh, strawberry crop requires completely different adjustment. The respiration rate of the plant is much higher than any leaf crop. And even uh, the control system and the software of the grow room or your TCA environment facility needs to have some very, very specific um, uh, specs. Now we have lots of companies uh, that they also provide uh, software and systems to control grow rooms and uh, TCA environments, but not all of them they provide sufficient um, um, options for strawberry production. So that is a very big challenge. And the one side is to understand what we can do in TCA, how we can reduce our energy cost, and also how those systems and softwares are going to support what we want to achieve. Another interesting area for strawberries in TCA is cultivar selection and plant material, which all of them come together under the umbrella of um, plant propagation and breeding. So lots of people ask me and uh, I ask them back, what is the ideal cultivar for TCA cultivation? So that question, which actually we do have a question, I received a question prior to the webinar about what type of strawberry are going, uh, are good, sorry, for vertical farming. So I'm afraid I cannot really dictate exactly what is the ideal cultivar. And one reason, one of the reasons is that uh, we need to consider the final consumers. For example, UK, we have mainly June bearing cultivars. For example, Molling Centenary, Molling Allure, Sonata, this type of crops where UK customers, they really like and really love. So when, for example, now March, February, we have imports from Egypt and we have some ever bearing varieties that they are resistant in heat, customers, they don't really prefer them. Probably they're only going to buy them if a recipe requires necessarily some strawberries, but they're not going to choose them otherwise. So cultivar selection, it is actually your, and if you have a vertical farming facility, you need to decide what's best for you. You need to decide whether a June bearing variety is best for you, or you want to go to a different cycle within your plant factory or TCI farm, with an ever better variety, considering also the challenges of uh, flower initiation. And uh, new cultivars are going to come, but we need to initiate discussion with breeders if probably they have already picked up that um, TCA is going to grow in the next decades. Another issue that uh, we come across related with the cultivar is also the plant material. TCA, we would like to achieve 12 months around the year production of plants, uh, of crops, sorry, and that's why we would like to have also 12 months around the year production of plant material. But this is not the case nowadays. What is happening now is that we have some months that you cannot really find uh, strawberry plants at the appropriate stage so they can give you a very nice and heavy crop. So as we go forward and TCA industry grows, I believe uh, propagators are going to change their 
propagation schedule to ally with TCA cultivation. And talking about propagation, um, I will go to my next slide, which is about pest control. And uh, I'll begin with a question that I received before the webinar, which is, um, have you had any problems with pests and diseases? If so, how have they been controlled? So to answer this question, I have those two pictures. The one picture shows us where our plants are coming from, how they look like, and the other picture shows an example of a TCA environment. So if we take the one plant inside one in the system of vertical farming of, or TCA, what we see actually is that we bring lots of potential pests and diseases inside the system that uh, probably are going to thrive. So we did have lots of issues and I think every project and every company that uh, they start uh, working with strawberries, they have similar issues. So what happens with that is that uh, we are using apparently pesticides, but biological pesticides and other compounds that they are not harmful. We are also encouraged by um, our agronomists and advisors to use um, any type of biological control. But of course, that is not ideal because uh, what we want to achieve at the end is to grow strawberries vertically without pesticides. So comparing to where we want to go and where we are today, there is quite a long road to walk. Potentially, we might go into in vitro propagation when we have a TCA environment, or we just uh, find uh, a different uh, type of propagation. Maybe they can start propagating with uh, hydroponic principles and not using soil and uh, sand. But definitely that is an issue which uh, um, links with uh, plant hygiene and uh, hence with all the problems that you might face with pest control in the TCA environment. So next topic, very nice pictures. Lots of people ask us as well, how on earth are you pollinating those flowers? And we did have a few questions about uh, pollination in CA system and uh, what challenges we had. So, with CA systems, I assume the person who wrote the question uh, did not mean glass house because glass house pollination is cracked and everyone knows how to pollinate in a glass house. But uh, pollination in TCA does have some challenges and the challenges mainly are that not everyone thinks beforehand, before gets that hive inside the system, how these uh, bumblebees are going to be healthy and happy. So we end up having uh, lights that they're not very good for bumblebees welfare. In any case, bumblebees, they can be happy in TCA system, but we need to talk with pollination experts and ask them their opinion, what is the best way to go forward? Comparing to other ways of uh, pollination, for example, fan pollination or using brass, I definitely think bees, bumblebees, are best. And that is because fan pollination can sometimes miss and not pollinate very well some flowers, while a brass can push actually the flower and you end up with misshapen fruits at the end. So let's go to talk about business and what are the main business challenges for TCA strawberries. We have lots of challenges around CAPEX and OPEX, which uh, are probably very closely linked and very well related with any other vertical farming uh, project and crop. Vertical farming anyway, it's a bit heavy in CAPEX and sometimes we think that OPEX might be also high. But uh, with strawberries, we have a bit more of a challenge because we need to control the environment in a bit more strict and uh, diverse, different way than microgreens and leafy salads. 
We have also to deal with the um, weight plans. If we are using an NFT system, then that is a win. But if we are using Koya bags, then probably that's a problem because we have to deal with the weight of the plants and we need to find quite robust um, systems and uh, structure to keep that uh, plant, the heavy the weight of the plants. And uh, OPEX, again, if you want to have a very tight environmental control, the operating costs also are going to be high. So we have these challenges to tackle, but probably this can be very well, especially the, opera the operating costs around um, environmental control if we hire, find sustainable ways of uh, uh, energy. Another challenge for new companies into the TCA industry is uh, where to find the strawberry expertise. Because the strawberry expertise is not only plant uh, physiology and plant science. We have also to know about uh, pest management and also hydroponics, maybe software and sensors, and of course, to be quite um, capable dealing with uh, data. So that is considered for the new entries in the industry, one of the main issues, which then is linked very well with my next topic, which is labor cost. So before I share what I think about the labor cost, I would like to ask you if possible to take that small uh, poll we have created. If you scan the QR code, you're going to uh, land on the Slido um, poll where we are going to ask you, is TCA labor more expensive than outdoor growing? So we are very much keen to know what do you think. If Johnny, if you could uh, give me a hand with that, would be great. Yeah, there's a, there's a link in the uh, the chat as well. If people would prefer to use that rather than the QR code, you have to you might have to select the live polls tab as opposed to the Q and A tab. Good, thank you. All right, I just had to make the poll live. The poll is now live. Good, thanks. Here we go, the votes are coming in. Can you see it, Katia? Um, I can now, yes. Yeah, so we're at like 70% say no. Can you see my screen that I have shared the poll? Yes. Good. So we have uh, 19 people, 20 now. Most of the people say no, shouldn't be. It's not more expensive. Let's wait uh, a few more seconds. Yes, it's catching up with no. Feel, feel free to use the, the chat if you want to provide a more nuanced answer than yes or no, of course. Yes, indeed. Yeah, probably people think it's not, go it's not more expensive than um, outdoor production, and I would probably have to agree with that. And I will give my rationale around it. So in a TCA environment, we don't have the element of weather. And also we can give uh, to um, labor opportunities to progress into the facility and into the business. So you have a stable labor, uh, which know what to do inside a quite good to work environment. 
So having also make the assumption that a TCA probably is going to be urban. So you are talking something peri-urban or something very close to a town where you will be able to find lots of labor. So there is no reason why to expect that TCA labor is going to be more expensive than outdoor production. Only probably if we consider that uh, the expertise, like as mentioned before, strawberries and hydroponics, that might be difficult to um, find at the moment until universities have more specialized courses about that. Um, but robotics also probably are going to find somewhere their position and they are going to contribute towards um, less expensive um, picking. At the beginning, we might talk about higher capex, but uh, going forward, these services are going to be cheaper and going to be more efficient. Okay, good. Thank you about that, Paul. So I'll go um, forward to the next topic, which uh, for me is um, consumers acceptance. So that pictures I have here are all of them grown in a TCA environment. What we have seen that they have in common is that um, the seeds are actually inside the flesh and the flesh is um, a bit swollen around the seeds. So what um, we have discussed a lot in the industry with uh, vertical farming and leaf crops is whether consumers care about where that crop is coming from and what they think about hydroponics. So there are consumers that can be hesitant about the source of these products. And that's a challenge all of us need to tackle. Some countries consider hydroponically grown products superior of conventional products. But this is not the case for all countries around the world and also not for all um, groups of consumers. So we need to focus on educating people and uh, letting them understand that uh, it is a um, sustainable way to grow and uh, we can grow TCA strawberries and they can be absolutely fine and healthy to eat them. Actually, in some cases, depending on the light uh, used, you can also have enhanced nutritional content. So it's a challenge to work on and to educate people and uh, potentially everything is going to be fine in a few years. Next one, business model. As I mentioned before with um, the two examples of Agricool and uh, Oise, we see that the business model is one of the very, very important uh, aspects of the business. If the business model is not right, then you cannot really have a viable, viable business. And hence, a question I had prior to the webinar, how close are we to profitable strawberries vertically farmed? What is needed to make them a viable product? So my answer to this question is actually we need a very good business plan. We need to understand where we go. We need to understand what is our competitive advantage. And we need to find the appropriate way to sell those strawberries. And of course, there are other challenges, but if you wish to have more about um, these challenges, you would like to have a further discussion with me or we can probably set up another, you know, discussion about strawberries under the umbrella of UK UAG. It is uh, something very, very exciting. And uh, if we work all together with uh, this exciting topic, we can probably find some solutions sooner than later. Now, before I close, I just wanted to go through a few questions I received and uh, then Johnny also, if you can help me with uh, further questions, if there are any further. So prior to the webinar, we had some questions and uh, one of them is about the yield. How does the yield and berry size from TCA grown strawberries compare to conventional tabletop tile grown crop? So if we think uh, OISI, for example, business case, we see that their berries are quite big. But what they're doing, they're removing from the plant 
most of the berries and they keep a little amount, a small amount of berries so they can grow big. Based on the trials we have seen and also other trials from other researchers, you can achieve a good yield, which is comparable to tabletop, but we have other issues, lots of other plant science challenges that does not allow the crop to be as high as we would like and as we expect. So in comparison, we want to see the same and we can see the same. Some researchers and companies have achieved it, but for an entry level company and project, this is quite difficult. Another question I received was about uh, nutrients, some um, uh, elements like uh, sodium and uh, chlorine. So how many of uh, these different micronutrients uh, a farmer needs to add to the solution for healthy plants? So I'm afraid you have to ally with your agronomist and have a very close relationship with them to find exactly what you are looking for, depending on the size of the facility and uh, substrate. But uh, what I can advise um, to do is to go probably in the website of some big uh, fertilizer companies like uh, Haifa and Yara, where they include uh, a variation of nutrients for substrate and uh, recirculated systems, and they include molybdenum, which you have included in the question. But I would like to just highlight that chlorine and sodium needs to be at the minimum levels inside the nutrient solution because they cause massive issues. Now, another uh, resource that people can find information about, uh, for example, cobalt and um, silicon are peer review articles and uh, with a web search, you can find a lot of information about that. Also, I received a question about um, airflow inside the TCI system. So that question, you need to have um, to sit down and talk with your grow room specialist and uh, the experts that they build the grow room for you. Uh, because uh, airflow is a combination of things and relates very much with uh, temperature, relative humidity and respiration of the plants. Now, strawberries, they really like uh, some airflow, so you won't have an issue with the bid increase air exchange rate. But uh, if you go too high, of course, it might be a problem. Regarding uh, CO2, that some people have asked some more questions about that. Um, CO2 during uh, initiation of flowers, I'm afraid I cannot comment on that. But uh, before you make a decision about CO2, you need to be sure that you have provided good light conditions. So actually the plants utilize CO2 and this expenditure doesn't go wasted. Another question was, how sustainable is growing strawberries in indoor production, in indoor manner? So sustainability actually has three pillars. One of them is economy, the second is society, and the third is environment. So when we talk about sustainability, we need to cover all those three. Economically and socially, TCA strawberry production can actually tick those uh, sustainability targets. In terms of environment, I think that is a challenge for the whole vertical farming industry. But definitely, if you find energy that it is uh, from a sustainable source, that's going very much to help towards a sustainable final product. Next question is, uh, which substrate do you recommend? And my answer is Koya, with no explanation, thank you. And. Uh, the last question I have is, um, in a plant factory, are we able to harvest strawberries weekly as we do with leafy greens? And my answer to this question is again, yes. Of course you can, but you need to be very smart how you are going to plan your um, plant factory facility. But definitely you can. 
So now let me wrap up so Johnny can help me with uh, any remaining questions. So going back to the question, what is the secret of growing strawberries in TCA? So that is a fascinating question and there are lots of things to learn about TCA, but the secret is I think all of us to start talking and share some knowledge so not everyone has to reinvent the wheel. So collaboration within the industry with um, a pre-competitive manner, I think that is the way forward. And this is how we are going to crack and more people grow strawberries in TCA. I thought, I think that is uh, enough for today. And uh, at this uh, point, uh, Johnny, if you have any questions in Slido, if you can let me know, it would be great. Yeah, great. Thanks, Katya. There's a that's brilliant. Lots, lots, lots there. Um, I've got a, a couple of questions in the chat and a few on Slido. So I'll do the ones on Slido first. Please, anyone, feel free to follow the link in the chat and, and add your questions or vote for questions, uh, which yep. you prefer. Um, uh, if you use your real name, I'll um, ask you to. Uh, I'll invite you to unmute yourself uh, if you if I can find you on the list, and uh, you can ask yourself. Otherwise, if it's anonymous, I will ask. So the first top voted question is from Anonymous and it says, you, you spoke a bit about um, bumblebees um, and their health, but someone's asking to know a little more about how are they affected by LED light and how do they react in the small enclosed space? Yeah, so with LED light, uh, I they don't have an issue, but we need to be quite um, um, careful with uh, the flickering. So the flicker is not below uh, the threshold that they can see because otherwise they start uh, kicking off uh, object avoidance uh, behavior. So um, bumblebees are actually fine in a closed environment. They don't have any problem with that. Uh, just you need to be aware of the flickering probably and uh, the spectra because they need also to have some UV and probably some green elements inside. I hope right. that's enough. But it's a massive topic and probably requires a whole big, you know, webinar for that. Yeah, totally. Uh, great, thanks. Um, the next one is from Lindsay. So, Lindsay, if you're there, uh, please unmute yourself and ask the question. Otherwise, um, uh, I can ask. Ah, uh, yes, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, hi, uh, Katja. So, my question was: um, so we are in a, a sustainable LED. Uh, company and we work with TCA and CEA um, to reduce OPEX costs and, and kind of yeah. increase yields which you've touched upon. Do you feel that naturally for strawberry growers the overall kind of capex OPEX cost is one of the main put-offs to switching from kind of outdoor growing to indoor growing? Yeah, I think, uh, Lindsay, that actually one of the main issues, it is uh, CAPEX, OPEX, and I think that um, when we have to talk about uh, the farmers, I think they feel very um, close to the outdoor production, and sometimes it's difficult to, you know, change their minds about uh, that. I think, um, as I said about the consumer's acceptance and perception about TCA, the same um, happens with the farmers. Most of the cases, they're a bit protective with what they're doing, which is amazing, you know, but they are a bit afraid to go forward, especially with these high OPEX and CAPEX. And yes, it is a problem for them. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. Cool. Great, thanks, Katja. Um, uh, and we have another question from Anonymous, uh, which says, uh, where do TCEA farms source their plants at the moment? How much does the cost of the plant impact the production cost? Um, I, yeah, I guess that means yeah, plants so, as in strawberry plants yeah. rather than plant as in equipment. Uh, but. Yeah, so um, I touched a bit on that. And at the moment, uh, I believe most of people who are working with strawberries are getting their plants from um, uh, propagators that they mainly produce plants for outdoor production. And so that is a problem by itself, as I said uh, very briefly. And uh, what was the second part of the question, Johnny? Um, I have deleted the question, so I can't remember. 
Uh, okay. Well, maybe, uh, no, I can, I can. Uh, yeah, how much does the cost impact the production cost? Yeah, actually it's uh, quite a lot and significant cost. And especially if uh, someone is trying to consider in vitro or any other type of uh, propagation is uh, quite a lot. So when someone, that's why I highlighted the business model. When uh, you construct your business idea and your business model, you want to include that cost and see whether you want to go for June bearers for a short period of time cultivation, or you want to go forever bearers, including, you know, challenges of flower initiation and potentially the weight of the plants. There are lots of complexities. So, yeah, the plants are coming from propagators that they mainly produce them for outdoor production. And yeah, I hope I answered the question, but anything else, please email me. Great. What else? Uh, cool. Uh, we had a question from uh, Martin Goodchild about uh, BRICS levels. Uh, Martin, I don't know if you want to ask the question yourself. Yeah, hello there. Um, yes, it's really just a, um, a question regarding this, uh, following on from the question about yields um, compared to sort of indoor and outdoor, um, whether anything has been similarly considered for uh, sugar levels um, and BRICS levels in the product. Yeah, actually the BRICS level, most of the cases are higher. So if uh, someone does not uh, mess up with irrigation and fertilization, um, we see that BRICS levels are higher and uh, that is quite good because many wholesalers and supermarkets are having a specific threshold of um, uh, BRICS, although it can be a bit challenging with um, transport. So higher yields, are, uh, sorry, higher BRICS are quite common in uh, LEDs, under LEDs and uh, yeah, a bit higher than outdoor production we see. Thank you, Martin. Great. Thanks, Martin. Um, uh, so someone messaged me privately, so I'll assume they want to remain on, on this, but they're asking if you can elaborate a little more on the range of yields per meter squared for TCA strawberries. Okay, I have in my mind per plant. So for TCA and outdoor production, I think for June berries, we're looking for something about uh, 250 to 350. Of course, if you get something more, that's a win, but around that is what you are looking for, June bearers. And June bearers, just to highlight, they give uh, flowers in 60 days, and in other six days, 60 days actually, you have the crop ready. So it's a quite quick turnaround of plant. While when you have an ever bearer variety, you are even looking for a kilo per year, but you are going to keep that plant um, for a whole year. So again, as I said, the main issue is that we cannot get the plant, um, the plant science and the plant uh, hygiene right. So you cannot achieve those yields because just you have so many other things to figure out. But definitely you can reach uh, um, one kilo for ever bearers and uh, 300 grammars for one cultivation for June bearers. Well, thanks. Uh, we have a connected question, I suppose, from uh, Hale. Uh, Rihan, uh, Hale, would you like to ask yourself? Yeah, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. It was very interesting. I'm just wondering, you know, we spoke about the business model. I mean, you spoke about the business model. And uh, do you have any study or have you calculated the production cost per kilogram of a strawberry in indoor farming setting at all? Yeah, uh, good question. Thank you, Hale. Um, I'm afraid I don't have something uh, ready to tell you about that at the moment, but as you can understand that uh, the cost of production is a bit multifactorial issue. So that depends on uh, what is uh, your, uh, you know, equipment, what are you using as equipment, what is your labor cost, where are you located, what is the cost of your facility as um, the land, you know, so there are lots of uh, issues around it. So I, I cannot comment on this, but as you very well said, is uh, a business plan and business modeling uh, query. Um, maybe I can have a look and if you want to email me, we can have a chat about that later. Fantastic. Just as a follow up to yeah. that question, do you think that the electrical cost will be the main challenge or do you think that there will be other major costs for running such a system? 
So if I understood uh, your question, I think uh, which cost you said is going to be the electrical main... Electrical cost, electricity for lights and... Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think electricity is one of the bigger uh, issues and that's why we need to find a sustainable source or even collaborate with some provider for that. Um, yeah, I think it's one of the main issues. I, when we have done some analysis of... Uh, operating costs, that is the most uh, significant one. Thank you. Thank you. Great, thanks, uh, Hale. Um, right, I think we'll make this the last uh, question. Uh, so uh, Andreas is asking uh, about um, varieties and, and, and tissue culture methods, but Andreas, I don't know if you want to elaborate on your question a little bit uh, first. Thank you very much, Johnny. Congratulations, thank you for your uh, presentation. It was very thank you, Andrea. Uh, so I would like to ask you if, uh, if you, because you know I'm propagation manager and director of the nursery here in Scotland, uh, I would like to know if you have a keen on uh, a tissue culture variety indigenous with uh, much uh, much less uh, uh, need of uh, pollination and also a variety of uh, something like everbear, something like um, I would say Camarosa uh, mm. we used to have in Greece, something like yeah. that will be beneficial for the uh, urban farming of strawberries. Thank you. Yeah, so um, tissue culture, uh, I think uh, going forward with TCA is going to be used. I have seen some uh, work on uh, in Japan and they call it something like precision uh, propagation, something like that. Uh, at the moment it's very expensive and especially uh, for you know the industry where we're just in the infancy so much at the moment, it's quite expensive to use in vitro or tissue culture. Uh, I think it's a very interesting area, although, and if someone has the budget, I think it's good to try to see whether that's a good way forward to minimize also the uh, pesticides application. And now in terms of uh, the varieties and uh, the Camarosa, you mentioned that, uh, yeah, I know we used in Greece as well in others, um, Mediterranean countries. Um, as I said, that is a quest really for the company that uh, wants to grow TCA because in the UK, um, these Molling Centenary varieties, for example, Sonata or other varieties like Sonata, Elisanta, June Bearers, they are more preferred. So if you bring something like the Mediterranean varieties, there is a challenge with that. But uh, the business model can even be, you know, a completely um, exotic variety brought indoors, you know, and then you can market it differently. So again, we go back to the business model, which I think is very, very, very important. Specify your target, your consumers, what you want to achieve, how you're going to penetrate into the market. And that is one of the most important. Then as uh, Hale last uh, to include all that uh, massive uh, electricity cost at the moment. So business model, I think, is one of the top priorities when you talk about TCA. And thank you for your question, Andrea. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Andreas. And thank you, Katia. And thank you, everyone uh, who uh, attended today. I hope you all learned an awful lot about strawberries. Maybe we don't know all the secrets, but we certainly know some of the secrets now. Um, so great. Uh, thanks, Katia. And uh, this recording of this will be available uh, in a few hours uh, on, on YouTube so you can share it with your friends. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you at the next one. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.